Okay, this lesson is for Monday, November 14th, 2011. Today, as you walked in, hopefully you got the two worksheets that are on that table. You're going to need the worksheet for that says power at the top. It's a power lab that we're going to be going over, but you'll also be calculating some work. And you should have also gotten your homework assignment and some problems, some problems that you'll be doing. They're not word problems, um, just some calculation type practice that you'll be getting on work and power. We're going to go ahead and start by reviewing this lab that you're going to be going over today while I take attendance. So let's go ahead and take a look at this lab. If you click on it, it would take you to this power stair lab here. You'll put in your name, the date, and the class period. You'll notice that the purpose here is to recognize the watt as a unit of power. And remember, we discussed this in the notes on Friday. And recognize the relationship between force, distance, and time with respect to power. So how we use force and distance and time to calculate the actual power of something. So we're going to see who the most powerful person in class is today. The materials that you'll need are going to be a meter stick. And instead of the three or four stopwatches, we'll be using an eye touch to get the timing down. And instead of a bathroom scale, we're just going to approximate the weight. So you'll just tell us what your approximate weight is. Okay. So I'd like for you to go ahead and take a look at this background information on your own. It just kind of explains where the watt came from. And you can go ahead and do that as we walk out to the stairs. We'll be going out to the foyer for the um, theater area. So we'll be walking out to those stairs that we used last time. You'll just go around the corner and out to the theater area. And those back stairs will be the ones that we use to actually do today's lab. It's going to be important that if you have any um, medical conditions that exclude you from participation, that you voice that. So if you feel like um, you know you're not able to participate in PE and PE type things, you should also make that um, a point to let me know right now, so that you don't have to actually participate in going up the stairs if you're not obviously allowed to do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and locate that staircase. We already know where it is, and you're going to be using a meter stick to measure one stair stair step and we'll measure that in centimeters we'll multiply by how many stairs there are and then we'll convert from total centimeters for the height of the stairs into meters that height is or that height for meters will be the distance that we'll be using in all of our calculations so you'll have to write that down once we have that distance for how many meters up the stairs are we'll actually go ahead and get some time measurements so every person We'll go up the stairs. You can either choose to run or walk, whatever you're most comfortable with. Obviously, if you walk, though, it might have an effect on how much power um, we record for you. And if we are looking for the most powerful person, then the velocity that you travel up those stairs, the amount of time it takes you, is going to be a pretty big, important thing for the for the calculation and you'll get to see that but like I said um, it's more important to me that you do what's comfortable for you so if you don't feel like running up the stairs then um, you might not have as much power but um, you'll you'll get there in a, a way that you want so before we go out there I want you to design a data table on your own paper and I want it to include um, your weight in pounds and in newtons it should have time work power and horsepower on the very far right hand side. So again, a data table where you can write down um, your weight in pounds, um, how many newtons that is, and to calculate the newtons, it's up here. So we would take one pound and multiply it by the 4.45 newtons. So if you're 100 pounds, you take that 100, multiply it by 4.45, and that would be 445 newtons. Okay, so that's how you convert to newtons and as we walk out to the stairs you can all do that whatever your weight is just multiply it by 4.45 and that'll give you how many newtons you are okay and when we get out there every person like I said will go up the stairs and we'll get this time measurement here and when we come back into the classroom we'll calculate work power and horsepower by using the equations. So we'll start with work and power and I'll explain the horsepower thing when we come in and it's explained a little bit further down in the worksheet but remember work is equal to an object's force times their distance so by calculate by converting your pounds into a force from gravity in newtons we can now put whatever this is um, for your weight in newtons into this F here in the equation we can multiply it by the height of the stairs, this d, and it'll tell us how much work you do to get up the stairs. Okay, now to calculate power, we're going to use the equation power equals 
work divided by time. So if we know what your work is, we can plug that work in over here into the power equation and we can divide it by the time it took you to go up the stairs and we can calculate how much power you have. Okay, so before you leave, you should be able to have the amount of work you've done, the amount of power that you had to do to get up those stairs. And we can make some conclusions about that. We'll answer some questions um, here, in, here in class. Hopefully you can finish these before you leave when we get back. We're going to try to get those times as quickly as possible so that you can finish as many of these questions as you can. Remember, if you don't finish, I really encourage you to try to come in in the morning. I am here at 7.50 um, up until 8.30 when the first bell rings. So you have about 40 minutes where we can make sure that you get all your work done. So if you're not able to finish all of this here in class, all these questions for this lab, you will be able to come in in the morning, and I will um, make sure that I, I help you get that finished. So try to bring this in tomorrow if you're not able to finish at night. Um, also, there's the, the fact that you can email me. So if you want, you can email me. Okay, so once we're done with this, um, if you're able to finish in class, you have a homework assignment. Um, you'll notice that I have the equations for work and power up here, and I've already done a given step, an unknown step, and all you have to do is write down what equation you would use, substitute the numbers in, and then solve it. So you only have to do the ESS step. These aren't word problems. I've already given you what you need to do to solve the problem, so you don't have to go fishing for any of the, for any of the given information. Um, you'll notice here that there are a total of nine problems. Um, there is a typo here. It goes from one through three, four through six, and then it goes from four through six again. And that is a typo. This is actually seven, eight, and nine. So you can go ahead and change those if you want in your paper now. Um, but this is actually going to be due tomorrow. So make sure that you have this and your lab completed and ready to turn in when you walk into class tomorrow. All right. If you have any questions, again, I encourage you to email me, and let's go ahead and get out there and get this lab done.